Well, let's talk about the Octopizo Brooklyn interview on the Mic Check podcast. Now, if you ask me, was it necessary? Hell to the fucking no. But I do understand that Octopizo has always been the one to want to play big homie. And definitely he wanted to see us um, see him kick some game uh, to this uh, Buruburu youngins, Mr. Wright and AJ. Um, the conversation Kulingana na Mimi wasn't that all. Unona. It appeals more to a hip-hop audience. And I feel for someone who's just a fan of podcast naturally, someone who just uh, tuned to YouTube and just want to watch a normal conversation between two or more individuals, I don't necessarily feel that that is a conversation that any person just tuning in to watch a normal conversation or the normal conversation we are used to watching on podcast, I don't think it's something that someone like that would actually spend an entire whole hour watching. But personally, as a fan of YouTube, <laughs> I am a fan of YouTube, yes, sir. But personally, as a fan of hip-hop, um, what can I say? You know, um, when it comes to age, I think I'm closer to your age, uh, Okto. Uh, the Brooklyn boys are way, way young. So I didn't see a lot of intelligence from them. I just kind of saw like uh, two young fans looking, uh, having um, had the opportunity to sit with uh, someone they look up to and and it's like they were just happy to be there. It's like they were just happy to share the same seat with Octopizo and just learn from the guy. More so from Mr. Wright uh, than AJ. AJ kuna venye kiasi alikuwa, you know. Um, strike sema alikuwa anajifanya cool. The, the nigga is a cool nigga. I've, I've met AJ uh, marakadhau kumta. He's a uh, nidudi amta. Nidudi amta. So <laughs> I've met him... Uh, Marakada, uh, he's a cool young dude, he's a cool young dude, he's laid back, so him being laid back, I think is just naturally his nature. Yeah, but um, that conversation, me si kuona importance yake, si kuona relevance yake. To fans of hip-hop, to fans of Brooklyn Boys, to fans of these young artists, I can see... Um, why they'd get excited seeing uh, such a sit down, such a conversation, right? But uh, for someone like me, someone who's older, someone who's a millennial and not a Gen Z, I'd, um, I'd, I'd, I'd have wanted to to hear more. Okay, Octopizo gave quite some game to these guys. Eh? Him talking about investments, talking about uh, bonds, although Kiasi Ali, Ali exaggerate your place. Yeah. <laughs> Eh <laughs> mse um, octopizo octopizo alisema unaweza buy bonds na chua ni alafu in like uh, 5 years urudi upate ime multiply to 10 million eh um, mse octojo na exaggeration but i hope i hope they got the point i hope he drove the point home when it comes to isovitu za investments definitely treasury treasury bills and uh, government bonds are are one way to invest money market funds so that was a highlight for me in that conversation. Kwambiama Vijana Kosasa AJ was talking about Okto asked AJ, what are you doing? Ninini may invest other than Ninini may invest into other than Umziki. And AJ was like, uh Saina Fanya stories are FX trading, Nalan stories are FX. Well <sighs> <mse. laughs> Nini, um FX trading is um is is a uh, sio sure bet unaona and we all know how watu kuja social media wanatuambia ni traders we all know these guys are scammers and we all know these guys are not earning money from trading they are earning from teaching other people how to trade and uh scamming other people on matters trading uh selling them fake uh, binary bots you know so yeah yeah that that Maybe to him it feels like it's a wise investment, but I actually do appreciate Octopizo being real with them. Also, when it comes to Ikikuja stories, a relationship, they talked about relationship. And um, I remember AJ, what Walisema, they are dating. 
and the women they are dating they met after being artists so mr wright said the lady he is with did not know at first that he was an artist now, but wezi jua mdenge labda alijua and then akajua nikionesho morio najua we ni msanii then atani atani beba from ile perspective ya mini groupi uh, mr ag on the other hand said the same the makonaesa hii wana they started dating after you know he blew up as an artist and she knows he is an artist so i really do appreciate octopizo uh, being honest with ag and telling him you actually dating your fan and octopizo telling ag that he's dating his fan was actually at a more subtle if it was me i tell ag you're dating a group this lady is only with you cuz you're famous um sometimes it's a path to getting a woman but uh more chances than not is that uh that person is not genuinely with you because they love you they are probably with you because they are they were a fan they turned to a groupie and by chance they happened to be the girlfriend to the artist so it was it was wholesome seeing octopizo being honest which other highlight did i take from that interview uh, did they have some yes they did have some questions for him that's why i'm saying the conversation was centered more around hip hop and music than um, than just a wholesome um, wholesome conversation yes when it got to easy stories are investment stories are dating it became an wholesome interview it became an wholesome conversation but a majority part of the entire interview or rather the entire sit down was just based on music um which i also understand sit now pin now put down sana au ni wasani definitely conversation did revolve around music me i'm just speaking for the casual podcast fan eh for the casual podcast fan like i said at the beginning of this uh, commentary it's not an interview that they would sit an entire whole hour to listen to or to watch and um yeah so back to the questions that they got to ask octo they got to ask octo why he doesn't uh, do interviews with people uh vitu kama hizo you know what not and what not and uh, you can just tell uh, from the way octo was responding to their questions you can tell yeah this is someone with a lot of experience this is someone who's been in the game this is someone who studied the game and um yeah 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 so for me as a hip hop fan it was it was it was good uh, getting to see that cuz you know there are a lot of young people who look up to these kids um oh another thing when it comes to music history ya ku kupanda stage na mamorio kama 50 bana style ya wakadinali <laughs> style ya wakadinali i appreciate the fact that Octo was honest with these kids and tell akawashiwa cheni yo mentality because hiyo ni mentality and most of the time that is what puts these kids down and he even gave an example with um, Doki of course it kuna mabishte madoki wezi tu walk in kwa theater bishte yako ni sajio na mfanye operation anaweza kumwambia eh Morio ni aje story story tu za ufalo una get umsa atakushwa atakwambia hapana wewe bana hii ni hii ni place yangu ya office toka unaona na ukichezo utatolewa na security so with the same same seriousness that um, other people treat their careers with treat their professions with is the same same um, seriousness he implored them to treat their music so that was definitely he kicked quite a lot of game so yeah you can go ahead and watch that sit down on the mic check podcast i think their channel is called upsid network or upside network what a stupid name to give a youtube channel Once ni kama alikuwa gameanzisha cyber channel ya cyber alafu akaitan to a podcast my guy chucks yes and uh, nini so yeah go and you can go and watch that interview so if you are a casual podcast fan i can advise you to go and check it out i don't see a casual podcast fan uh, sitting through an entire one hour i've said this mpaka imekuwa cliche to watch that interview but if you're a music fan if you're an octopizo fan if you're a brooklyn boys fan if you're a fan of music and hip hop then definitely that is one sit down that you're going to find very very interesting ah oh, now on to other news still revolving around music and hip hop 
um i don't know if you motherfuckers know that i am a big 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 kendrick lamar fan and not just that for the longest years rather for the entirety of my life not kizungu <laughs> structure kizungu mse or rather for the entirety of my life that i've had senses and uh, big being a fan of music Lil Wayne has always been um mse na look up to sana 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 um Lil Wayne is just dope one of my favorite songs is Mona Lisa by Lil Wayne and Kendrick Lamar unajua Kendrick came like years 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 after uh Wizzy and there's actually a time that um Kendrick was signed to Young Money Music but his style of music his uh, west coast style of music was way different from um from um the young money music uh, type of hip hop type of rap and it didn't work out for him on uh, young money and so i think he got dropped by the label if i'm not wrong and uh, that's when he signed with tde or rather was he still signed with tde so now uh, these labels they kind of like Unaweza kuwa nati signed by three different labels eh? Yeah so I still think he had uh he was still signed to TDE and maybe had a co-sign uh, with YM Young Money ndio sasa later on he got signed to nani Dr Dre and um once he got signed to Dr Dre that's when my guy blew up But yo Kendrick is just bro Kendrick is just um it's just different and wizzy wizzy is still there uh my mount rushmore of rappers um in no particular okay in a particular order uh anaitwa j kendrick lamar number 1 uh little way number 2 and uh, kendrick lamar num- no <laughs> let's give um let's give tupac number 1 cuz tupac is a legend and uh, he died quite young so unajua he never had that longevity to for us to really really um get to enjoy um his career yeah um, yeah so but I still put him as number one. Tupac was really really deep he was really really real so Tupac number one, Kendrick Lamar number two, uh Lil Wayne number three, um nani who's this guy's name uh Kanye West number four, then number five, I'll give it to Nas number six, I'll give it to Jay-Z um Rakim Rakim is uh, usually on my top 5 but um let him go to you know my number 7 uh number 8 number eight. this is my my mount rushmore okay so number 8 Giuliani eh 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 I'm say eh <laughs> Giuliani is just a different beast banana number 9 uh notorious BIG and number 10 kitu siwa <laughs> wote sikiaje kitu siwa <laughs> yes sir yo yo so that's my mount rushmore right um of hip hop artist anyway let's go back to the main story here kendrick and um and um Weezy. um so the united states have um this um it's like um i think it's like um let me not call it a world cup uh, but it's uh, it's a very big event uh, uh when it comes to this uh sport this favorite sport they have the american football it's basically it's rugby with people wearing helmets and and uh, long long pants and uh jerseys with wild shoulders so yeah so it's called the nfl super bowl and usually during the half time they have this performance and it's big it's yo it's it's really really big and it's happening in New Orleans uh 2025 and they've had Kendrick Lamar perform now i do not dispute in any way whatsoever Kendrick Lamar performing at the NFL halftime uh, Super Bowl halftime right um if anything bro if anything it, 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 it's been a long time coming he should have even done it like years back but i guess you need uh, to be in the game for a while to do it um so kendrick is uh, headlining the show and i do not have any doubt that this guy is going this guy is going to give a master 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 masterpiece performance 
Kendrick Lamar is known for his performances. This guy's uh, stage performance is just different. You know, the crowd engagement, fan engagement. If you saw the super halftime Super Bowl that happened, um, was it two years back where they had Kina Jay Z perform? Kina, not Jay Z, Kina 50 Cent, Dr. Dre, Snoop, and um, and Kendrick also performed. And out of all those guys, eh, Kendrick's performance was the best, all right? Now, I understand him headlining the show, and but I don't see why Wheezy is not on that lineup, okay? All right? Um, Nini, so for those casuals who don't understand, um, Wheezy or Lil Wayne comes from, Nini comes from New Orleans. And Lil Wayne, over, I think he's been in the game for over, he started, uh, which is around 30, no, I think he's in his 40s. And he started, uh, he started rapping at uh, 13. So I think he's been in the game for over, over 20 years. I think at him, 30. And this guy up until now, he's still relevant. You know, and Wiz is dope. Wiz is a dope motherfucker. He's not... His, his uh, live performances are not necessarily the best, but yo, Wizzy, yo, Wizzy, Wizzy, Wizzy is a genius, you know, So I would also understand, so now you are for, me being a fan of both, I'd really, really understand why people feel that um, Wizzy not headlining this um, this uh, show was uh, in, in it, this, um, this respect of uh, this disrespect of some sort eh? but still Kendrick Lamar has had a good year especially with the not like us you know those diss tracks aimed at uh, Nani at, aimed at Drake Nani he, Lil Wayne Mwenyewe posted a video the other day and he talked about how he felt disappointed because this is something he he wanted and this is something I think someone had told him he was going to get so so I think he was comfortable. He was just waiting for the news, only for the news to turn out that, yo, it's Kendrick who's going to be headlining the show. And I understand. Um, people have been arguing on the internet that, um, Nini, um, the fact that Wizzy is from New Orleans doesn't necessarily mean that he should headline the Super Bowl because he's, it's uh, going to be happening at his home time, hometown. But you see, the point is, because, yeah, uh, let me let me just finish that. Yeah, because the uh, the Super Bowl has happened in other cities, in other towns before, and the artists who come artists who come from those cities are not necessarily headlined. But yo, this is little Wayne. You know, Mumekam say why hip hop I headline his show, and uh, um say the person headlining the, that show is not from that city, and not only that, um, the biggest rapper known to come from that city. He's not just a big rapper in the United States. He is a big rapper worldwide. You understand? Um, Kendrick is huge. Kendrick is big. But when it comes to international, it takes a certain level of hip-hop fan to subscribe to Kendrick's type of music, or rather to Kendrick's music. Wheezy is just known internationally. So, I don't know, man. I like Kendrick a lot. I really, really do like Kendrick. But I feel like Wheezy should have headlined that show and mm, Nani, Kendrick Akwe, you know, part of the lineup. Uh, they could have done something like what they did with the... There's this Super Bowl that had Kina Shakira. So I don't know if Shakira was the headliner. Yeah, yeah, I, I guess. I guess Shakira was the headliner. But uh, it was Shakira and um, this uh, lady, Jennifer Lopez. They gave super, super, super performances. Paka, I don't even know who was the headliner, whether it was Shakira or Jennifer. But people are more impressed by Shakira's performance. So yeah, so my take on this is I feel Wizzy should have headlined the show and uh, Kendrick to be just part of the lineup. And probably they'd have had Kendrick um, headline another show, um, or rather headline the Super Bowl another year or two years later. You know, because Kendrick, Kendrick is still... Kendrick has, still has like 20 more years and uh, to be in the game. So he still has some time. Ah, now tell me why the fuck I sat down an entire four hours to watch this bullshit knockoff 
show called Shanty, Shanty Town from South Africa. Say, and I blame um, what's this lady's name, Mariah from uh, the Mike Check podcast. She's definitely uh, not definitely, but she's uh, the one who put me on this show. So I, I okay. So I was watching the Mike Check podcast. I think uh, it was a show from. I think it was an episode they did uh, a year ago, and uh, they were talking about um, what's this show, uh, Power, Power by Fifty Cent, and they were talking about how the sex scenes on Power were just wild and you know over the top. And Mariah sits there and says, "Eh, I do wanna say my Power. Kuna show in ito Shanty Town from South Africa." So I'm like, "Okay, <laughs> sex sells." <laughs> You know, so I'm curious, but I want to come to Limlipa. I'm like, okay, let me go watch this shanty town. Because if you ask me, man, Zepa was just a partner. You know, I'm say, after watching shanty town, I now do know for sure that uh, Mariah from Mike Check Podcast has never watched Power. Has never watched Power a day in her motherfucking life. Shanty town is crap. Shanty town is trash. I'm say the only thing they have going on is the sex and nudity. You know, Nigerians can't act for shit. And Iniedo has been a scam all along. When I, I, go, I came to know of Iniedo years back, years back when she did this movie with uh, Kanayo. Is it Kanayo or Kanayo or Kenneth Okonku? Yes, Kenneth Okonku. She did this movie with Kenneth Okonku where she used to call um, an aeroplane, aeroplane. And yo, <laughs> Mpaka, I think at some time up in Kenya, people used to call Ini Edo Elo Plane. <laughs> that's how, that, that's how, you know, that's how dope that movie is. But when you those, at that time, or rather at those times, we never understood what movies were. I'm saying, Ini Edo can't act for shit, Bana. Yani too, she's just, I'm saying, exaggeration over the top. Like there's this scene where she was talking to her, is it to her boss in that movie? And then she's, say cliche do you see those movies we used we used to watch uh those action movies we used to watch back in the <clears throat> back in the 90s and the early 2000s you know cg um <clears throat> say like she 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 was okay so in this scene she was getting worked up and and she's acting all pissed off her sister died and was used by these gangsters from shantytown so she's just spitting saliva all over mucus is just dropping from her mouth who the fuck told you that when you're agitated and when you're pissed off nini you have to spit nini spit all over and and mucus has to come out oh, I'm saying, it was just disgusting bana ai apana i'm say apana nigerians you people don't know how to act the only thing that you have going on is that you have a proper system a proper 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 system called nollywood but when it comes to acting you guys are trash fuck you guys manze fuck you guys how can you put such a movie such a trash movie on on netflix it is a waste of taxpayers money all over the world <laughs> do taxpayers pay <laughs> no <laughs> it is a waste of netflix payers money all over the world i'm saying yani, I'm say, i was so pissed off and then at the end of the first season of this movie they they um they have this um nini, uh, fight scene eh, action scene where cg in Edo is beating up two men how how i'm say you know if 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 there's anything that the internet has come to show us is that um there's fiction and there's reality. If you've watched Vitukama MMA, then you know for damn sure easy, easy Vitu Anatone Shanga Kwa TV in your father. So I don't know why these Nigerians would still want us to, to still watch such kind of nonsense and believe it's true. You know, when I watch a movie, I know it's fake, but it's up to you as the writer and as the actor or actress to convince me that this might actually not be fake, it might be real. Or rather, even in, in as much as I know this is fake, it is entirely up to you as a writer and as an actor or an actress to keep me to keep me glued, to keep me engaged, yani, to uh, to play your role, to make it appear appear so real, manze, that I actually become nini interested in the film, in the characters, in the nini. Ah, yeah, 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 manze. If these people are planning to shoot a shanty down shanty town season two, then 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 
they just shouldn't do it. As a matter of fact, Netflix should not even accept a season two of Shantytown. Manze, that movie was trash. Ay! Ay! The only thing they have going on is the few strippers dancing, the few nudity scenes they have there. And also, I don't understand when it became cool for African artists or African, African movies to start having a new detail. we copy so much from the West. Um, Nini, African movies have, have always been a little bit conserved, um, but um, I think it started with South Africa leading the way. The South Africans are the one doing nude scenes and sex scenes overly, 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 overly at the top. And uh, then um, Nigerians had uh, followed suit. Then Sisi Kenyans, it's, it's a little bit subtle. Very, 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 very subtle. No, no. But yo, um, if you want to watch, and this is in no way me knocking, knocking people down. But yo, Shantytown is, Shantytown is just trash in my opinion. I know if there are any Nigerians watching me or watching this video, they are definitely going to, to differ. But um, I've seen one or two, you know, proper movies from Nollywood. You know, the she the problem is uh, over the years, um, Africans had been uh, brainwashed to think that uh, Nigerians can act. But at those times, Nigerians were telling genuine African stories, stories about witchcraft, which which is very very rampant here in Africa. But then, other countries stepped uh, their games up. South Africa stepped their game up, Kenya stepped their game up, and Sasa Sai, Nollywood, or other Nigerian movies are just like a footnote eh, when it comes to the whole um, film industry in, 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 in Africa. Tell me, if, if you actually think Nigerian actors and actresses are so good, why don't we have a lot of them in, in, uh, in uh, Hollywood movies? But when it comes to African exports to yeah when it comes to African exports at Nollywood the biggest we have right now is a Kenyan Lupita Nyong'o the others are Nini uh, people from other countries talk about Angola Zambia Namibia Nigeria is not on your number one list there because these people can't act for shit but they have proper proper structures but when it comes to this shanty town apana this is this movie was trash this series was trash it doesn't uh, they should not make a season 2 of this movie they should not if you want to go and watch proper 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 african uh, films there's a shaka ilembe from south africa there's adulting from south africa there's a uh, nini oh man kenya kenya has some dope 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 movies there's single kiasi from kenya there's a uh, nini salem from kenya there's a um, nini pepeta from kenya yo and the list goes on and on and on and on you understand but yo shanty town was trash yo so <laughs> the one and only alicia kanini has opened a YouTube channel. Well, I guess it's not necessarily new. It's um, I think it's a few weeks old, and um, you know, uh, the channel is going. Trust me, Manze. Anasa, Anasa can get you far. Anasa can last pornography, anything to do with the um, sexual nini perversion can take you far. Can open doors for you. You know, if you don't believe me, then Alicia Kanini is proof enough. So I recently saw Nini, uh, came across the YouTube uh, channel by Alicia Kanini. And uh, on this channel, she's uh, getting to share, you know, about her life, you know, outside porn, um, about porn. You know, she 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 has this uh, very, very engaging conversation uh, conversations. Honestly, 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 if you ask me, she's... Uh, She's really, really natural when it comes to the screen. Um, I feel if it wasn't for her, you know, adult content and she like uh, just pursued media, um, maybe we wouldn't know her, but um, I think she would still excel in it. It's unfortunate that, um, you know, we had to know her via her adult content. 
um, but if um, that is the trajectory she's taking, if this is the direction she's going and becoming a content creator on YouTube, I honestly 100% support her. She's really, really, really natural when it comes to YouTube. Um, I think she should um, do more lifestyle content. You know, uh, this uh, daily vlogging, um, you know, her only, f uh, nini, her, nini, this pervert, these perverts are definitely, 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 definitely in love with this young lady. She's young. She looks good. She doesn't, like, she doesn't look like a porn actor. I understand. I feel if that's the direction she's taking, she should take it really, really seriously. Um, I actually do have faith she's going to excel in it. Um, her social media channels are, you know, have considerable numbers. And I feel... If she like takes it seriously for like a year or a year and a half, she might even become one of the biggest YouTubers in the country. You know, with just does she even need does she even necessarily need coaching? Because she's so she's so 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 natural, eh? And um eventually I feel I feel that um this could actually be her way out of adult content if she wants if she wants to eventually stop doing adult content i do understand there's a lot of money in uh, uh doing adult content but you can imagine if a lady that is so naturally talented when it comes to media stuff like that excels in other things like youtube uh, uh tiktok um, influencing instagram influencing and all that and even uh x influencing you can imagine if she became successful in one or any of those platforms and started influencing for big brands, etc. She can actually end up leaving, leaving uh, adult content. Cause nani anataka kwa namsta namsta namrembo iwa kijingiza, akigota, akigota ikus mse, got got atena akigota ikus. So yeah, manze. So you know, it's uh yes sir. So like I was saying, um, this is the right trajectory for Alicia Kanini. So I feel um. Um, she should be more diverse with the, uh, you know, YouTube content. She should, uh, you know, do more, more of lifestyle uh, vlogs. As uh, Nito Ajay, this, uh, she can do this getaways, this staycation, staycation videos, staycation getaways, reviews, and that. And she's, uh, she's a big name. If I was any brand out there, I would actually want her to influence for me. Under the condition that uh, if I give you an ambassadorial deal to um, uh, to endorse for me a product, you don't do adult content for the period that you're going to be endorsing for us. That is actually one way uh, to get this young lady out of doing adult content. Because she has the numbers. She actually has the numbers. So, um, <clears throat> the 2024 Pulse Influencer Award uh, Zimeanza, and I see that um, Oga Obina was actually put under the same category of media and uh, blogger uh, influence of the year alongside Larry Madowo. Additionally, Oga Obina was also placed in the category of uh, best YouTuber award of the year. Um, I feel Oga Obina deserves the best YouTuber award. Because Atatu Mans has been putting in work. And uh, Mans has been doing a lot. Mans, has, Mans also does a lot uh, when it comes to, you know, helping out the needy, boy child and shit like that. Mans has done a lot when it comes to helping out uh, Demo Facebook. Um, however, I feel that the media or blogger influencer of the year should go to Larry motherfucking Mado. Larry is the goat man. When it comes to media, Banata, we shouldn't, it shouldn't be a debate. You know, Obina has done his thing, Banale. You know, nobody is putting down Obina's um, work ethic, uh, but Larry's uh, work is has been exemplary. Unajua. And we all know that Larry does not uh, necessarily need akoka nini kawad kadogo kapals influencer, but you know just out of merit, um, say I feel we should give him. You know, at first I I just seen the you know the, the your media blogger award uh, nini 
circulating on the internet. So when I went to vote, I actually didn't know that Obina had been um, had been um, put in another category or a YouTuber. So Roy Ro Sema, you know, pigi Obina, so nika vote ya Obina. Then, um, eh, nika wana jina Larry Mado hapo and uh, Roy kanyambia, wa, with the way bana Larry Mado has been injecting on this um, nini, Ruto government, <laughs> uh, the way Larry Mador reported on the protests, uh, the Gen Z protest that we, the millennials, attended as well, um, you know, I felt, apana, you know, Larry Mador deserves, you know, because, yeah, yeah, when I draw with Oga Obina, he's afraid. He's also, you know, he's like, um, he also wants to, even from the interviews he does, you can tell this is someone who wants to be in favor with the government. But eh, hey, yeah, Larry Mado doesn't want Nini. Larry Mado doesn't give a fuck, Bana. Whether you the government uh, subscribes to his uh nini, content or not, yeah, and I inject. So definitely Larry Mado deserves that awards. And Sazani Kitarem Kachini, I saw I my guy to Mili Bana. Like, eh hey, shit, you know, loyalty also dictates you vote for this guy. So it was <laughs> It was weird for me because I voted for the three guys. Eh? Um, and then when later on I saw the YouTuber, nini, YouTuber category, ah, I said, ah, wase wangu waiko nini wako hapa, but manze wase wangu waiko nini wana struggle. Wako huko nyuma, but I was like, yo, wase wangu waiko nini nito wavoti ya next year, unawana. Eh, for now, jo, work ethic tu ya obina jo ina, inasema tu. The work ethic itself is just speaking for itself. He's just saying that this guy deserves this shit. So I voted for Obina. And then I went back to the media blogger category and uh, media and blogger category. And I voted for Larry Mado because that guy deserves. He doesn't necessarily need it, but his, his, his successes are even bigger than that award. But out of merit, you know, out of, uh, am I even using this word merit? Unajua uh, Indo Fala. Ya unasikia kawad kazuri ka kizungu uko inja alafu unanza kukatumia kama mjinga. You know, I'm not even using it right. But it, it just sounds good using it. Yeah, so out of merit, um, out of merit, let's give that shit to Larry Maduro.